Today we're going to talk about the Norse Threat Intel app for Splunk. Um, the first question is, of course, how did we get here? Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to download those pieces from Splunk. So we see here at the Splunk apps page, by simply typing in the word Norse, it'll bring up two apps that are currently designed to work um, with Splunk 6. Um, this app, which is dependent upon Splunk 6, does also require this TA or this add-on file because this is where the key is going to be installed. So once you download these into your environment, this is what it looks like after it's been installed, but how did we get here? Well, the Norse Threat Intel Overview includes a brief overview of the application and the value it can bring to your Splunk installation. Well, the very first thing you need to do is you need to get a key, and that key is available through this link, which is going to communicate with Norse and allow you to fill in a few fields from which we will then send you the key. So that key is going to be installed in that TA file that we were just referencing. Now, there's one key, but you notice there are two places to install it. That's fine, just paste it into both spots, and um, it's going to work just fine. It's going to give you access to the IP Viking API and the Darklist API, and we're going to see how those are used shortly. So going back to the home page, one of the first things you can do to check this out is go to the Darklist statistics page. Now what Darklist represents between 2 and 3 million, or maybe even over 3 million, of the most egregious IPs on the internet today. And this is today. Um, we're looking at IPv4 and IPv6, but we are reporting on IPv4, since that's really what everybody's using today. Um, our architecture is designed to support IPv6 going forward. And as you can see here, had nothing been displayed, you would have been told to simply download the dark list. And that's going to execute that API to the Norse backend and then provide that data to you and then just simply refresh this page. So you can do this at any time, whatever frequency is, uh, whatever your need is for your business. Today you see we have over two and a half million IPs, and these score with this IPQ score, or a risk score, between 20 and 100, 100 being the worst. And what we've done is we've created some graphs out of the box, but you know Splunk is designed for you to be able to create your own graphs going forward. And we've broken them out by the different risk categories that we have. But then we've also broken it out by categories and protocols. And we have many more categories defined in our infrastructure. But for the sake of Darkless, we've really focused on five or six that are most interesting to our customers. And that would be proxies, passive DNS, malware, HTTP, botnets, and something else called bogons, or um, IP addresses that are not routable at this moment in time. Um, we've also broken them up by different risk entries. So, for example, something that we can see here is um, Tor exit nodes. Um, in Splunk today, when you look at the IP block list, you'll see the Tor component exposes about 5,500 published Tor exit nodes. Well, the Norse infrastructure knows about a few more of those. Let's say we wanted to drill down on this. We can use this graph of extreme risk entries, and notice we see now that 189,000 uh, can be categorized down into 9,000 and change of uh, Tor exit nodes that experience an extreme risk score. When we click on this, we have the opportunity to view the actual IP and a limited set of context associated with it. The IP address, 
the risk score that we were talking about. Of the four ranges, we chose the extreme one. Well, what kind of uh, TOR? The TOR comes under the category of proxy. You can think of category and protocol as parent-child relationships. For every parent, there is one or more children associated with them. The country of origin, where is this TOR exit node emanating from? The Norse infrastructure is global, and so we will be able to report on TOR exit nodes around the world. In fact, we believe that we have about 98% coverage of all the proc TOR exit node proxies uh, at any moment in time. And this last category, maybe the most important, is the last scene. When was the last time Norse saw this TOR exit node? So if you were a security analyst, the next thing you'd probably want to do is learn more about this particular IP. So by clicking on this, we're going to transition from Darklist to IP Viking. And IP Viking is going to give you even more context associated with that IP. So here we see what we knew before, very high score, extreme risk. But now with this, we're going to tell you about network telemetry. Was I able to resolve the host? Do I know about the upstream service providers and AS numbers? Can I give you more geolocation information? In other words, specifically, this is coming not only from the United States, but New Jersey, specifically Woolbridge, New Jersey, with the latitude and longitude codes. Well, how does Norse figure this out? Well, Norse uses its own infrastructure to determine where this is actually coming from. And this accuracy level here with all these decimal points indicates that we're confident that we are within uh, a few feet of this registered IP. Now, associated with any risk score, we're interested in context. Context is key in security. So Norse scores it at 100. But what does that mean? Why? Well, again, we can see that this was seen as a Tor exit node. Somebody is attempting to hide their identity, and this was seen, in fact, as recently as today, because this data is live. This data is, is checked and, and recalculated constantly. The dark list, depending upon when the last time you pulled it down, has the most recent information up to that point. From the time you execute IP Viking, it will gather the information that could be as recent as five seconds ago. So now, how else can you use this app? Well, let's just say as a security analyst, you wanted to understand the kind of information that Norse knows about the dark list, and how would you relate that to information that's populating your Splunk environment from all of your trusted uh, sources in terms of firewalls, IPSs, routers, switches, and so on. So you can pick the time frame that you're interested Based upon the data that I have, I'm going to pick the last seven days. That could be as recently as 15 minutes ago, as you see. I can pull from any and all of my devices that are feeding this particular instance of Splunk. What am I interested? Well, in this case, I happen to be interested in the source IP. This list is automatically populated based upon the devices and the fact that Splunk uses the common information model. Because I need to triage my day, I want to say, look, only show me what comes under a risk score or range of high or extreme. So what does this tell us? This tells us of the 2.6 million IP uh, currently listed in dark list, um, 14 of these appear within my environment. As a security analyst, what's the next thing I'd want to do? Well, I'd want to drill down and get more detail. In this case, I'm very interested in this malware. So we can click on this, and here we are back again with IP Viking. So this has been an example of how we might use the Norse Threat Intel app within the Splunk environment. Please go and download these apps, try them out, uh, get your key so that you can have a 30-day free trial and see if this information and this threat intelligence can be useful for you. Thank you.